I want to show you how to do a self-portrait today inspired by the art of Alexei Yavlensky. Yavlensky was a Russian-born expressionist painter who lived and worked in Germany. He was influenced by some big artists that we all know like Van Gogh and Matisse and Kandinsky. He belonged to the expressionist school. Expressionism is known for its very, very vivid use of color, really bold color, often a bold black outline, and really simple shapes and lines. So these portraits are not realistic. They're pretty abstract, um, very expressive in terms of color, and the line work is quite reduced. That means there's not a whole lot of line, not a whole lot of detail. Um, so because we're all at home these days, not going to school, not going to work, we have a lot of time to focus on ourselves, who we are, what we love to do, how we see ourselves. I thought it would be a great time to do a self-portrait. Let's really focus on ourselves today. And I love Yavlensky because his colors are so bright and it's just a really fun way to draw yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is get a nice big piece of paper. It should be mixed media paper, so not too thin. We're going to use oil pastels today. And you also need to have a mirror. So I have a mirror right here. I'm going to put my mirror right over here. Stand it up so that I can see myself when I'm drawing. So if you have a mirror, either one that stands or a handheld mirror, you can prop it up against something so that you can really see yourself as you're drawing. Have a look at Yelensky's portraits. You can see that there's a lot of visible brush strokes. So that means that you can really see his brush strokes. The eyes are often really big and almond shaped. There's not really any details. He doesn't even use light reflections in his eyes. Um, not really any details in his hair either. They're just basic blocks of shape. Lots and lots of color. I'm going to start with pencil. And I want my portrait to be really, really big. You want to fill up your page. Um, right now you're just going to create a basic head shape. Now we know that head shapes are almost like an upside down egg. So your chin is going to be a little bit pointier than the top of your head. So the top of your head is wider than the bottom of your head. If you turn it around, it kind of looks like an egg, right? You could just draw an egg and then turn it around. There's your head. Now you can do this any way you like. You can do a portrait from an angle. She's looking kind of that way. This one is looking straight on. So I know that Yavlensky likes to use really big eyes. So I'm going to exaggerate my eyes. Here they are. You can make this as expressive as you want. Create some expression in your eyes. Maybe your eyes want to be really wide open. Maybe you can really accentuate one of the characteristics that makes you special. So this is an opportunity for you to really kind of have fun. So I'm making my eyes super big. Why not? And then his noses are really, really simple. I know it's really hard to draw noses. I think it's the hardest thing to draw when we do portraits. But you can do a nose like an L shape. Just a really simple L. You can do kind of a rounded L, slightly hooked. A little bit of a hook if you're doing a three-quarter portrait. You can do a nose like this. It has two lines and then a little sort of bottom edge here. Here's another good example. There's the bridge of the nose and then just a whoop whoop. There's the little nostril. However you want to do this. So before I get too concerned about how to do my nose just right, I'm going to keep it real simple. There you go. Now that does not look like my nose in reality, but that is okay because we're doing 
expressive Yevlansky portraits. The mouths are also very simple. And if you notice, there's a repeating characteristic here. All of his mouths are closed. He does not do open mouths. See how they're all closed? Oh, let's draw a closed mouth. We can do the middle line of your mouth. And then you have the upper lip. And I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. Exaggerate means that I'm going to make it kind of bigger. I'm going to kind of make those proportions a little bit larger than they really are. We can do the hair. The hair is also really simplified. Now I have short hair. But today I'm actually wearing a head wrap, a head scarf. I don't know what, what you want to call it. It was a really windy day, so I decided to put my hair up in a wrap. So I'm going to draw my wrap and I'm going to keep it really simple. You can see that I'm not too concerned about making things realistic. Now, for my students who know me and come to my art class every week, they know that one thing that makes me unique is the fact that I always wear really big earrings. Right guys? So I'm going to do some really big earrings. Today I'm wearing these funny hook earrings. There you go. Now we need a neck. Now we don't want to do a neck like that, right? Very, very, very skinny. That's wrong. Even for expressionists, it's, that is too skinny. So I'm going to make long, uh, wider neck. Your neck should come down from where about your ears are, believe it or not. So wherever you drew your ears, that's kind of where your neck comes down. Now that one might be a little bit too, too wide. And then there's just really simple shoulders. And maybe here's, maybe you're wearing a shirt. Today I'm wearing a shirt that has just a really basic collar. And that's it. That's my portrait. So I'm going to trace everything with a big black waterproof marker. Now if you don't have this, you can just skip this step and go directly into coloring. Um, and then you'll outline your black lines later with a black oil pastel. But I want to save the oil pastel, the black oil pastel for later because it tends to smear into your other colors and make your other colors kind of yucky. So I'm going to start with a, a big fat permanent marker. And I'm just going to trace all my lines. When you're finished, you can erase any pencil lines. Okay, and now I want to use oil pastels today. So Yevlensky used paint. He used oil paint to paint his portraits. You could certainly use paint as well. If you have acrylic paint, that would work really well. But I want to use oil pastels. I want to show you how to use them to create this type of effect where you have these blocks of color and you have visible strokes of color. What you're going to need is a piece of scrap paper at your desk so that you can clean out your oil pastels. Sometimes the oil pastels uh, pick up other colors on them and they get really kind of dirty. So you can always clean them off on a piece of paper. So now I'm always going to have some of these pictures in front of me so that I can be inspired by Yevlensky's use of color. This is not a realistic coloring, so I would even say try to avoid going for those more skin tone colors and just go pretty wild with it. I'm going to choose yellow to begin with. I see that Yevlensky uses lots of yellow. And you can see how it's a little dirty, so I'm going to clean it off here. And I might use this yellow wherever I feel like there's a really strong highlight. This part of my nose. 
I'm going to use this one color in a few places before I switch to another color. That saves a lot of time and effort. I don't want to keep switching colors back and forth. Now I'm coloring in pretty tight strokes right now because I don't want any of the white paper to show through. But I'm creating sort of a shape of color. And by that I mean there's a bit of a shape here. Do you see that? A bit of a shape going on. And I'm just using the, this one first color in areas that I'm imagining maybe there's some strong light shining on my face. So any part of my face that I think maybe is catching a lot of the light. Areas that maybe stick out and stick forward like your forehead, maybe part of your chin. Before I get too carried away with one color, I'm going to move to my next color. I'm going to take this orange and again I'm going to clean off the tip. Now you can see that when I go up against yellow, the colors are kind of blending together a little bit. And it allows you to create a sort of a softer transition between colors. He definitely uses a lot of greens too. There might be a shadow here. Eyelids tend to be a little bit more shadowed. They don't catch as much light. So maybe this is where I'll put my green. Since green is a cooler color, reminds me more of a color that might represent an area that is shadowy. So anywhere where there might be a shadow on my face, maybe under my lips here, I'll add a little green. I'm kind of using my warm colors where there's more of a highlight area and my cool colors where there's more of a shadowy area. He uses more purples and oranges and reds and greens. There's not a whole lot of blue for some reason. There's a little blue in this picture. So I'm going to go light on the blue. Maybe instead I will use some purple. And depending on your oil pastel set, maybe you've got a few different pinks in your set. You could use lots of different pinks, lots of different greens. So I'm going to use a darker green now. I see that he's got some darker green areas. I might even use this other yellow here. He often uses red in his lips, but they don't have to be red. Here the lips are blue, here they're black. So remember, it doesn't have to be realistic. I think I'm going to use a different kind of red than what I've used before. Or maybe I'll use two different reds. So I have my lower lip, my upper lip, maybe I'll use this magenta. I quite like that magenta, maybe I'll use it somewhere else. Remember that repeating the use of your colors creates harmony, right? You definitely want to use colors more than once in your composition. Now as far as the eyes, he has a really strange way of doing eyes. Normally these would be the whites in your eye, but he paints them different colors. Lime, green, turquoise, blue. I think I'll use this lime green. I quite like how bright it is. And I'll use that for the whites in my eye. And then I will use some blue. That's the only place I've used blue so far because I see that Yavlensky doesn't use a lot of blue either. My hair is blonde, but Yavlensky often paints hair just a really kind of simplified dark color. This one has a few highlights in her hair. I quite like that. Maybe I'll use this as an example. With oil pastel, you want to start with your light colors first. So I'll make a few highlights in my hair. I quite like this purpley color. I think purple and yellow look nice together too because you guessed it, they are complementary colors. I think I'll use a little blue in my headscarf. And then I'm going to use some black. So the black might be where the 
creases or the shadows are in my headscarf. That's going to also create some good contrast. I'm realizing I don't really like this yellow highlight that I did here. It seems to be distracting me a little bit, so I'm going to go back over it with a darker color. In fact, I might make the whole thing a little bit more blackened, just the way Yevlensky would have used black to represent hair. Now for my neck, I'm going to repeat some of those same colors I used. I might use slightly bigger shapes here. I am aware that the neck is a cylindrical shape. It's rounded like this. So I am creating shapes with my oil pastel that are kind of following along the form of my neck. That's going to help to make your neck look like it's a little bit rounded. Now I did use a bunch of yellow before, so I'm going to use a yellow again. Now for my shirt, I think it would be nice to repeat some of the colors that I have up here at the top. So maybe I'll make my shirt a simple blue. Or maybe I'll use two different blues. So I'll make my collar a medium blue. Now you can see I'm not even being too careful about how I'm coloring. Normally I'm a real stickler for being very neat, but remember Yevlensky's brush strokes are very visible. That means that there's not a lot of smooth transitions. It's very visible and streaky, and that's okay. And that's why we don't have to be super concerned with neatness at this point. But what you do want to think about is filling up all the white areas in your paper. You don't want to have a lot of paper showing through. Here I might layer a darker green on top of this lighter green. You can do a little layering with on pastel. You have to layer dark on light though. It doesn't really work the other way around. If I want to create more streakiness, I can layer a little bit of dark blue on top of my light blue. It's good to stay in the same color family too. For example, I could do a little orange on top of my yellow. They're in the same color family. They're next to each other on the color wheel. I could do a little red on top of my pink. They're also next to each other on the color wheel. I could do a little blue on top of my green. They're also next to each other on the color wheel. Okay, so what color am I gonna make my earrings? Let's use this green here. Now I'm going to take a black oil pastel and I'm going to go over all of my lines where I previously used my black marker. So if you didn't use a black marker at the beginning, this is where you'll start emphasizing all of your features. So you want to just really thickly go back over any lines and shapes that you drew in. You can change the width of your lines too. So some of my lines here, I might make them a little thicker. Maybe this edge I'll make thicker. This is where it really starts looking expressive. The thick black outlines, the really bold shapes. And if you're doing this with paint, maybe you're using acrylic paint to do this, you would just use a finer brush and black acrylic paint. Maybe I want to thicken the top lid. If you have any beauty marks, now, I don't want to leave the background white, but I also don't really want to color it in with oil pastel. You can use tempera paint or watercolor or some other kind of paint and paint in the background. So I have some watercolors here. 
I'm gonna paint my background kind of a darker blue. I see that this is how Yavlinsky likes to do that. And all of these bright colors are really gonna pop forward if your background is dark. So I'm gonna choose a darker color. It doesn't matter really what color it is, as long as it's pretty dark. I think blue also works because I haven't used a lot of blue in my painting. And so if I use blue now in my background, it's not really competing with any of the other colors. I'm gonna use a little purple up here around, around my headscarf area because my headscarf is in fact blue. So to create a bit of a distinction, I'll use a little purple, purple with blue. That way I don't have blue next to blue. You see that Yevlensky does use a little black in his background as well. Again, I think he does this because it creates really strong contrast with your really bright colors. Look how it really makes my bright colors pop forward. One thing I haven't done, which Yevlensky does sometimes do as well, he might create a little pattern in his collar. So I'm gonna take this to the blow dryer and I'm gonna blow dry it. So I have taped down the borders of my paper before I started. You don't have to do this, but I think it makes a nice finish. Creates a nice crisp edge, which always looks pretty. So this is my Yavlensky inspired self-portrait using oil pastels in an expressionist style. I think it captures my essence without being a realistic portrait of myself. I still think that there are elements that really capture myself and I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. So I'd love to see what you can do in Alexei Yavlensky's portrait style. All right, have fun.